Hello there, you're watching the Anti-Social Media YouTube channel and the series Gammon Box that I do quite regularly nowadays, uh, which is normally where I take the piss out of the latest conservative and far-right fails, which is a, sometimes a weekly, sometimes a daily thing nowadays. But today, I'm going to flip it around slightly and change it, and this time celebrate something to do with the gammon. Now, before we go on, let's just say that people recently have been saying that gammon is a very racist word to use against the right wing. Now, first of all, it's not racist. It is normally a white person saying that to another white person, but the white person saying that to the other white person has noticed that the other white person has a very red face because they seem to be very, very angry and very easily offended and very snowflakey about everything. The things that they project onto other people is the stuff they do themselves. And thus, it gives them a lovely gammony glow about their face. And it's just a description of how angry they look <laughs> rather than anything to do with their race. People who say, oh yeah, gammon, you can't call people gammon, it's counterproductive, are the same people who spent years calling people soy boys and retards and faggots and all the rest of it because their opinions are slightly different from theirs. It's just, a one, it's just one other way for conservative people to say, please, please stop criticising me. I cannot take your criticism. I can't. And by the way, you're the real snowflakes. Now, flag shaggers is a term used by the left to describe people who are overly patriotic and more often than not, those people are right leaning. The kind of people who have a Twitter handle such as Tim17897 covered in Union Jacks as well. Now, recently, the government announced that every government building must fly the Union flag. That's a British flag on every single establishment in the UK. And a lot of conservative commentators and MPs have been doing news interviews with absolutely giant Union Jacks behind them. And as a result, people have been taking the piss out of them, including two BBC News presenters who noticed this giant flag behind one Conservative and noticed it out loud and then stifled a little laugh and ended up being, quote unquote, you guessed it, racist and so forth. And weirdly, there was two people involved in this, a white man and a brown woman, and only one of them was focused on in a very Meghan Markle style way of how she was the worst person alive. It's weird, isn't it, how people who accuse others of being racist towards them because of the word gammon is used tend to be a bit, um, what's the word? Starts with an R, ends with an A-cyst. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. And now for balance, here's a right-wing view of the BBC News scandal from a guy who calls himself Voice of Reason, but also goes by the name Free Speech UK. His argument is the lady from BBC News shouldn't have any free speech. Enjoy. Switch off. We don't want to watch Naga Manchetti wiping her nose with a box of tissues while sneering at our union flag. <laughs> What's most amazing about this video I'm about to play you is just the utter contempt for us and what we stand for. The complete arrogance of a network that think that it's okay to sneer at a politician and the fact that he has a flag behind him as if this is some kind of BMP rally. Watch this clip of Naga. Robert Jenrick, uh, thank you. I think your uh, flag is not up to standard size uh, government interview. Uh... <laughs> Measurements. I think it's just a little bit small, but uh, that's your department, really. It's just a thought. I can tell you now, if this lefty whippersnapper had spoken to me like this, I'd have been sure to reassure her that the British people love their flag and people outside of the lefty BBC. I'd have said to this woman, how dare you sit there snivelling and sniggering. The picture of the Queen, the picture... You, uh, you, oh, you'll be aware that, you'll be aware that every, every time we have... We, we've seen it every day, haven't we? There's, it's, it's, it's a stock Always a flag. ...thing, isn't it? Always there a flag. Uh, the picture of the Queen there as well, though, in the Westminster office, I'm assuming. Your days are numbered and you're going to be rudely awakened by the reality that people in this country are sick to death of the fact that you are raping us of our £160 a year and not delivering quality, impartial content. Naga. Try smiling. You're a disgrace. You're just the very worst. You even make Gary Lineker look humble. It's disgusting. To mock our flag and our politicians sneerily sat there on your pedestal. What's the word? It starts with an R, ends with an a -cyst. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. But it is funny when someone uses a flag overly to um, create a sense of nationalism, to deflect from the giant failures of the government and so forth. 
Oh, no, no, you, you can't take the piss out of this. It's, it's British. It's British. Yes, Brexit is, is, is a terrible state at the moment. There's many things wrong with it, but we did it. We did it because we're British. Look at this flag. We did it for this flag, this enamoured object. We did it for that. Now, before I show you this right wing comedy clip, let me just quickly mention a video that I uploaded recently called Defund the BBC is Propaganda for Morons, which is pretty self explanatory as a title. And it involved six different points in this video of why the campaign is ridiculous and is destined for failure. I could have added more points, but I went with six, right? And one of the points in the video was that right wing people in the UK generally think that the BBC is biased in a left wing way when it comes to many things, but especially comedy. OK, there's too much left wing comedy on the BBC. And I said I, I made a challenge to the viewers. If it's if it's rife with comedy, if it's just wall to wall comedy, can you name more than a handful of left wing comedy shows? Because I can't. I did it on, on the video. I, I went with um, Mock the Week. Have I got news for you? The News Quiz, which is a radio-based programme, so only has a small audience. And one other, which is the MASH Report. And one of those, the last one there, was recently cancelled by the new commissioner of the BBC because he also thought there was one or two, few too many uh, uh, left-wing comedy shows on the BBC. And he did that because of all the right-wing whining and complaining about the MASH Report existing. Now, the presenter of the MASH Report might have something in common with one of the presenters of the BBC News. I, I wonder if you can guess what it is. I mentioned uh, on the Defund the BBC video that one of the comedians that featured on the MASH report is the one and only prominent conservative comedian in the UK by the name of Jeff Norcott. And what the one thing that grifters won't tell you if you support their campaign to defund the BBC, or if you hate the abundance of left-wing comedy, what they won't tell you is that you, with all your whining, helped remove the one and only person who has the comedy mindset of you guys. The Conservatives have actually got rid of one outlet that they have, the one and only outlet that most people can think of. Now, I, I argued in the defund the BBC video that if you had right-wing comedy on the BBC all the time, you'd have six 27-minute episodes of people doing the attack helicopter joke over and over and over again, and that's it, right? You've never written a second joke in your entire lives. So that's why I'm so pleased that I'm about to show you right-wing comedy that is not only inventive, not only does not even touch upon that one joke, but also it's very funny indeed. Listen to how he structures his comedy, right? How it's balanced, even though he's a conservative comedian, okay? Jeff uses the same satirical formula as regular satirical comedy, or as critics would call it, left-wing comedy. It would normally stifle his jokes to do what proper satirical comedy does and punch upwards at the establishment. That's the whole point of satirical comedy. But because the Conservatives have been in power for 11 years, and he's a Conservative voter, it becomes a bit tricky. I don't know if you've ever spotted that kind of thing, but he manages to do just that. Plus, he manages to take the piss out of the left-wing people without being over the top, without being overly gammony or anything like that. And that is the key, potentially, to producing good right-wing comedy, is having self-awareness and self-deprecation and combining them together. And just to push my point further about how to fund the BBC is a ridiculous campaign, Jeff Norcott once again was appearing on the BBC doing this comedy routine. Once again, he's appearing on a programme that could be argued as left-wing. It's the Now Show, a radio show, which isn't overly left-wing, but does have lots of satirical elements and therefore has to punch up at the establishment fairly regularly, which means, of course, it is a left-wing com comedy show to a lot of critics. And one more thing before the clip, if you enjoy my brief analysis there of left-wing and right-wing comedy and you want to hear more about it, in fact 60 minutes more about it, I've got a video for you called Paul Joseph Watson Doesn't Understand Comedy, which I made a couple of years ago, which is an analysis of one of his videos where he completely misunderstands the whole point of comedy and completely misunderstands the purpose of left-wing and right-wing comedy. It's, it's an embarrassment of riches from this absolute idiot and it gives me an opportunity to really go through what punching up is, why satirical comedy is really in one camp only, and so on and so forth. Really gives it a very detailed and very funny look at how comedy works, I like to think. So that video will be available to click on at the end of this video and down in the description box as well. But for now, we're going to leave you with Jeff Norcott from The Now Show from early April 2021, talking about flag shaggers and various other things. 
ladies and gentlemen, here's a very rare example of right wing, exceptional right wing comedy. See you soon. And now, will you please welcome back to the Now Show, Jeff Norcott. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jeff Norcott, and I am a flag shagger. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> now, if you don't waste your lives on social media trying to keep up with modern buzzwords, let me explain. This is a new name for the artists formerly known as gammons, ukippers, or Middle Englanders. On one level, it suggests the kind of politicians far too keen to distract you with images of the Union Jack, which is the political equivalent of deploying kitten videos. And applied to regular people, it implies that you're the wrong kind of patriotic and way too fond of our beloved national flag. And when I say too fond, I don't mean fond in that sense, though flag shagging does sound like the kind of thing you'd see on a titillating Channel 4 documentary. <laughs> Shortly after a romantic story about a woman who married a bridge. <laughs> so, cards on the table, I am very patriotic. I love this country, I try to keep it rational, but will confess that I cried three times during Darkest Hour and once during Dunkirk. I can't believe it. The sacrifice, the bravery. A Christopher Nolan film where the plot actually makes sense. <laughs> Many on the left are particularly exercised about what they see to be performative patriotism, especially when it comes from the Tories, who have flags on show in every interview on government buildings and are probably wearing them as pants. <laughs> Critics think it's base and jingoistic, but most of all, I get the sense the real reason they don't like it is because it is effective. Recent YouGov polling suggests that 60% of people view the flag and those who associate with it publicly in a more positive light. And as we know from recent experience, doing things that make your party more electable hasn't always been a priority from the wing of the Labour Party who thought the best people to investigate the Salisbury poisonings were the poisonous. <laughs> Keir Starmer has faced internal party criticism for tentatively trying to get on board with this new patriotism. However, Starmer has also faced criticism from the hard left for condemning police vans being set on fire, writing articles for newspapers people actually read, and seeming like someone who actually wants to be Prime Minister. <laughs> and more to the point, a Labour leader trying to associate with British patriotism is actually nothing new. Back in 2007, Gordon Brown was extolling the virtues of the Union Jack and went as far as suggesting that school children should pledge allegiance to it. Now, even I might draw the line there. As a former teacher, it was hard enough getting kids to do their ties up and stop calling me Mr. Knob Chops. <laughs> <laughs> the Union Jack is a British design classic, like the mini letterboxes and those flexible silicone toilet brushes. Check them out, by the way. Look, it's Radio 4. You might not like my comedy, but you will thank me for that recommendation. <laughs> The pleasing visual of the Union Jack is why so many bands, artists and fashionistas have deployed it. But here's where you get the hypocrisy. When Rita Ora, Liam Gallagher or Kate Moss drape themselves in the flag, that's the right kind of patriotic. However, when the right are patriotic, well, the right are doing it wrong. The flag being flown by certain people makes them uncomfortable. So basically, if you're a working class white bloke, the only time you can wear the flag is if you're accepted a Brit Award. <laughs> now, my positive relationship with the flag and general patriotism comes from my love of the country now. I love what Britain is, not just what it was. I love its dynamism, its diversity, the way we came together when that awful American woman cooked tea in the microwave. <laughs> However, those that fear overt patriotism might argue that I only see the flag positively because as a straight white male growing up in Britain, this country has afforded me certain privileges. Honestly, I don't see why our national flag flying over government buildings is such a problem. It happens in plenty of other countries, including hotbeds of toxic nationalism like Denmark, and I can't see them dusting off the longboats anytime soon. <laughs> However, I guess the point is this seems like a new thing, so people need reassurance that this isn't the thin end of the fascist wedge, and also that someone putting a Union Jack coat on their pug isn't a racist dog whistle. <laughs> so this is my view. I am patriotic. I do think the modern left have a blind spot when it comes to patriotism. However, I don't think the Tories should be putting flags in place of a decent policy. I don't think there needs to be a Union Jack on every government building all the time. However, I do think that if there are, it doesn't necessarily mean we're in the last days of the Weimar Republic plunging headlong into a Nazi dystopia. And 
I don't think taking the mickey out of our national flag is automatically un-British. If anything, sarcastically mocking something people genuinely love is about as British as it gets. <laughs> Finally, I do think the Union Jack is quite simply a really good looking flag. And like anything else blessed with good looks, if you've got it, flaunt it. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's Jeff Norcutt, the artist formerly known as Mr. Knobchops. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a...